<laughs> I didn't mean to call on you, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Now, I'm going to ask, um, how, did it, how did it feel when you found out your name was Captain for boys for one of the most hated things in Acid Age? Yeah. No, that was the thing, is because, again, I'm sorry, because I don't play games. It's kind of good, actually. I don't end up judging myself when I first go in. I first go in, and I, I, uh, Jenny was the voice director on the first one, and so I, I go in, and, and I meet the engineer and her, and we sit down. She likes to chat a little bit first, and we sit down. And I go, so here's a little trailer that we have for your character, and they play it, and at the very end, they have the very computerized voice say, because they didn't have, it was literally a computer saying the line. And they go, there's a big deal. Yeah, they've never spoken before. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. Oh, by the way, they're hated. I'm like, oh, but they're going to love you. No. Oh. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, and you know, so you can't play, I am a hated thing. You have to go, well, who am I? So, and you look at the lines, and you get an idea of what the character is. And you go, actually, no, this is a very logical, uh, it's a logical, uh, um, uh, considerate creature that, that, aside, that usually goes with logic, but occasionally, you know, there are there are judgment calls it makes that you wonder if they're based on facts or are they based on something else? Does this unit have a soul? So, um, so at that point, it's like I don't even see Geth as uh, I don't know Mass Effect One. I don't know the horrible things that that, that our race may have done. But that race is not me because I guess I am an I. Uh, next, uh, wait, you had one. Sorry, you sir. Seriously, what is the, what is your two-part question? What is your favorite movie, and what is the worst movie you ever seen? It just in general, really? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, that, I've probably been in the worst movie I've ever seen. Um, <laughs> several of them. Uh, it's funny, it's, it, and I don't know if this is just me or if it's an age thing. I think it might be an age thing because the more that you see, the more you take in over time, you go, I can't just say the favorite movie. Um, it's, and that's something about the passion of like being so much into a certain anime show or video game or whatever. When you're younger, it's easier to have it, but as you get older, you start to see the breadth and the nuance of all these things, and you go, I want to actually encompass all these things, and now it's, you know, and this is the expansion of your personality as you get older as well, so. Uh, but I will say, so then it becomes more of a, where in time, so in time right now, at this moment, Movies that I've seen recently that I can remember, because I guess I'm losing some of the gray matter. Um, but I was just talking to uh, Bonnie Gutting about this. The, um, uh, uh, it's not even right now. Um, was, uh, uh, I love Charlie Kaufman and, and what he does with scripts. And it's, you know, there's a similarity between him and M. Night Shmali Maliman, whatever his name is. <laughs> and, I mean, Shmali Maliman always has that last minute twist and then shows you 30 seconds of what you might have missed that actually gives you the answer to this ending. You know, and it was fun the first time, the second time, it was like, okay, nice, and the third time, it was like, okay, that's a gimmick. That's like, uh, it's just a gimmick. Um, so, but, and, but I do appreciate the craft that goes into his stuff, but Charlie Kaufman, his mind works in such a way that, that he has to put these scripts out. He has to get his own little Chinese puzzles out, and I love those. So, Adaptation was one of his films, which is brilliant, yes. Um, most people know, no, 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 I get to that, was the Sunshine? Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Most people know that one. That to me, like, see, that to me was his like his most commercial. Um, and uh, but then he did uh, Synecdoche, 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 New York. Most of you, everyone's like total blank face. I'm not gonna rent this movie. Uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman. Um, a lot of female actresses, you'll know. Uh, it is a Chinese puzzle of a movie. It probably speaks a little more to men on a, on a meta level than it does women, but it, it's still a beautiful film. It's essentially about death and the different types of deaths that you have. Deaths of relationships, deaths of your ego, deaths of your, your pride, all of it, and then the ultimate death. And Diane Weist is in it, who is the voice, but well, you'll find out at the end. But it's, it's one of those movies, it's either, either you love it or you hate it. And, but before that, it used to be Brazil, Terry Gilliam's Brazil, which I think is a phenomenal film, too. So, and Bruce Joel Rubin also did Jacob's Ladder, and that's another one of my favorites. Oh, now, see, I can start going on now. Fuck you, whoever asked that question. <laughs> Worst movie would be ones I've been in. I was in Scarecrow Slayer, horrible. I was in Titanic 2. Oh, wow. Yeah! Run the claps. <laughs> um, but it was even worse once than that. I mean, actually, Titanic 2, I was like, I'm actually kind of a prince. They pulled that off. Um, I'm horrible in it. I've got, a, I've, got a, I've got a scrawny goatee. I've got a hat too big. i got a big head that you don't notice until you put a hat on it. And then all of a sudden, it looks like when I've got a flying saucer and balancing the entire time. Um, 
Those are some pretty, no, those have got to be the worst films. So that, those are any direct that, that Hollywood puts out that you're supposed to embrace it. They're so obviously formula from the beginning. I hate any of those. So yeah, questions? Yes, silver-handed man. Golden-handed man. Sorry. It all fluctuates with the drum. Yeah, I might get it rocking to the basement. If you're lucky. Uh, they got everybody. Can <laughs> uh, okay. I ask you a question that Shepard asked uh, Legion? All right. Okay, so what do I call you? Talk to, talk to, is it not Ada? I was going to go talk to Ada Wong? No, talk to, uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. talk to Edie. Uh, I knew it. Edie will tell you. She's a basketball <laughs> You call me DC. Letter D, letter C, like Washington. Or domestic, uh, challenge, domestically challenged. Domestically <laughs> I, I, did you want a better answer than that? Well, actually, I Okay, good. Thank God, because I didn't know how to answer it. <laughs> I, I, I was thinking, like, you know, Legion line that you use in Mass Effect 2. Oh, you wanted me to be a trained monkey for you. <laughs> <laughs> Questions? You can start again? Yes. I see now you can. <laughs> it's a two-part question. Um, the first one, um, as an actor, what is... Like looking back, what's been your favorite uh, movies, shows? Oh, anything? With anything. Oh shit. <laughs> Well, you know, I'm, I'll be honest. It, will, it wouldn't be voiceover. It would be it would be on camera because that's what. Well, is that a fire alarm? No, or is there a ship coming in? <laughs> it's foggy out there. In all the humidity, they've created fog, and now they've got a fog going. Uh, oh, good. Oh, I saw a great guy. Uh, do you guys what was his name? The um, Pleiadian cult that was in San Diego. You remember that Pleiadian cult? And he had all the all the guys cut off their testicles, and they all prepared for the coming of the uh, Haley's Comet. Yes. They did the, yes. The guy, the guy in the elevator had had his face on it, and it was glowing, and it said, "Follow me." <laughs> I think it just needed the Twitter logo. Um, the, uh, but I would so okay. But so back to your question, um, uh, uh, stuff that I haven't produced myself because obviously I give myself more fun roles. Um, but I'd actually say it would be that that NBC thing, uh, playing my playing a character named DC and, and on, on that sitcom. That was fun, and it was well, exciting because it was the potential that I would come back again in a, in a second season and all that. But it got canceled. That was the closest I had to a to an on camera series. So my first real series, full series, has actually been. It was last year, it was Transformers Rescue Bots. I've been in LA since 85 trying to make a career out of it. So it's not an easy life being an actor. Some people get better breaks and whatever, but it's all, you know, it's based on talent, yes, but it's also based on opportunity. You know, you never know when that comes. So, but as Jim Carrey says, you just need to be prepared. Do your best at what you do, and eventually, if the opportunity rolls around, you're ready for it. So, uh, questions? Oh, so many more. I'm going to go all the way to the back, and then we'll work our way forward. Yes, ma'am. All right. Um, pretty much the way that to ask you this question. How, um, did you find it kind of fun working on Star Trek Enterprise? Oh shit yeah! <laughs> you know what was great about it is it was green screen. I've done, um, uh, I've done green screen four times. And uh, uh, Enterprise, Enterprise was the first time I did green screen. The other time, no, sorry. The first time I did green screen was Charmed. I played. Uh, I got turned into a pig, and that was that was that was fun. But it was very short. It was the last shot of the day. I just went over there, and they go stand here, and I get on all fours, and then come back up, and then you're done. And, uh, and they had somebody else loop my breathing for that, and I was like, yeah, I also do voiceover. Anyway, um, so that was the first time. And then this, uh, then the second time was Enterprise, and then after that, I did. Um, I did a, a 80s man. Look up 80s man video on YouTube. It's beautiful. That's all green screen. And um, and then the crooked eye is all green screen as well. And that's the one that's on iTunes. You guys should watch. It's a beautiful. My mother wrote the short story. I adapted it. Linda Hunt, God of War. She um, she narrates it. Uh, and uh, it's, it's, it's yeah, it's a really cool film. Yeah. Now you want to look at it. <laughs> the crooked eye on iTunes. But back to Enterprise, uh, uh, Star Trek Enterprise. Again, that was one of those things that um, it's like you, you get cash and you think, so what is it, a Noblian? And you have to look out to find out what the Noblian is and all that. And uh, it's so funny. Wait a minute, was it you who thought I was Dr. Phlox earlier? No, it wasn't you. No. Somebody came at the table and they go, I really love everything, but Star Trek Enterprise was my favorite. And I'm like, really? And I'm like, this is one episode, but thank you. And she's like, you know when the creatures got out and you had to cut? And I'm like, no, that wasn't me. And she's like, you're Dr. Phlox. And I'm like, 
no, he's 10 years older and he was a serious regular. <laughs> So I had one episode, I, it was one episode, I played it in a snotty Denobian. Now here's, here's the thing you don't know about this, is on that one, well what's fun is the green screen first, is I'm supposed to be, you know, they're supposed to get the harnesses and do the climbing as they're taking us out of this cavern or whatever. And we're supposed to be adept at this, we can just climb ourselves. So they have a huge sound stage and they have basically a green floor, they have the camera hanging from the ceiling pointing down, and then I start there and they go, action! And I'm on all fours but up. It's kind of interesting when you try to do this. And I scurry on the floor on all fours but elevated all the way across. And then they put me up on a, on a thing climbing up there. And it's like the shot is like only like, like 10 seconds in the, in, this, in the episode. But it was like a long, that was like a, like a half hour of doing all that. So that was, that was kind of fun when they do the magic of that. Now the other interesting thing is, we were given the character, we were given the character breakdown. We created our thing and I, and, and I played him a little more, um, uh, just more logical and more passionate about my rocks or my calistites or whatever they were called. I had again, um, and then they called us back for um, uh, uh, for a pickup to do uh, a couple other scenes, and, then, and we're like, cool. So this gig went from from uh, a couple days to you know a couple more days. Then we get a call to come back for looping. We go in for looping, and they go, you're redoing all your lines. I'm like, seriously, was there noise in all of our lines? They go, no. They want your characters to be snottier. So we all had to go in and take lines where we're going, um, well, it's very simple if you just find out where the map is, something like that. And, but, so, so I say, well, it's very simple if you just find out where the map is. And they go, no, it's not. Well, it's very simple if you just find out where the map is. You know, but you have to fit the lips, and it, but it doesn't quite match the eyes, and it was very strange. So that whole, that whole episode, the, all my lines, except I think for one scene where I'm angry, are all, are all looped. Uh, it was a neat experience. So yes, I did love it. Oh, and of course, fucking childhood dream, I'm on a shuttle, Going back to the Enterprise, and the Klingons are firing at us, or Romulans, Klingons, anyway, and we're like, you know, to the right. <laughs> and we're like, that's a childhood dream come true. So that was cool.